The following is a presentation of WON Sports, America's home of champions. Speaking the Kansas from Bowling, like Kansas from Bowling Network, and let's welcome those in New York and across the country on the WON Network affiliates. And Jonathan Rios, thank you for having us on your show across the country. Please support the charity of Kansas from beforecancer.com. John Winchell, one of the hottest bowlers so far to start the season, 127 so far in your first couple, 122 overall, turning 49 pretty soon. Oh, and you're bowling consistently. Nice to talk about you that. Want, you, want, you want to trade? You want to trade? <laughs> no, I don't want to trade. <laughs> Not yet. Um, You've been a great bowler, steady bowler over the years. What's been the key to being consistent over the years? Uh, I made a decision probably about seven years ago to start actually getting more in shape. I, I was never really overweight, but uh, I worked on the core strength, leg strength, um, and it really gave my game a lot more stability. Uh, able to repeat the same motion more consistently, and it, it definitely jumped the average up a couple of pins. And you bowled the Pro Series last time with your son. Tell us about that, how that went last yeah, night. Yeah, that was pretty cool. We did uh, the first Pro Series doubles event yesterday at Academy Lanes in Haverhill. Um, he was a substitute. I was supposed to bowl Brian Fuller Jr., but um, he fell ill to COVID. Um, so he was the last minute fill in. He bowled great. He bowled over his average. I think he averaged 108 for the day. He's 17 um, right now? No, uh, he turned 18 in 18, April. 18, yep. that's right, 18. Yep. All right. So he's good. coming along well. All right, good luck today. Thanks, Paul. All right, let's keep both right. The number five seed will be leading off just a moment. Keith, a lot of bowling lately. You've been on, a fire, on fire lately. Thank you. Thank you. 125 career high average, which is great for Kenneth and bowling, by the way. Thank you. What's been working in your game? What's, what's, what's been helping you get to that, that 120 to 125 level in the last couple of months? Um, more focus and uh, I don't know, more adjustments, like uh, John was saying. It's more just trying to stay adjusted to the lane and make sure they're staying square. Um, Again, to refer to what John was saying a lot, yesterday at Academy, I bowled with uh, Chris Winniars, and he was trying to help me with like staying straight, and once I stayed straight, I was basically getting the, everything that I needed, so hopefully this works today. All right, good luck today. Thank you. So it's three strings, total pinfall, two boxes at a time. Paul Graham, like Greg Gouillard, and Bob Lee, we'll get started right now. From Portsmouth Bowlerama, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Season 2 of Candlepins for Cancer on Candlepin Bowling Network. And again, we'd like to thank... Some of our W1 affiliates carrying our series, Brooklyn Free Speech HD, MNN Bro BronxNet in Brooklyn, Superior Community Media, Marbella Community, Community Media, and Saugus Cable Television Station. For the broadcast schedule and station information on when and where Kenneth Pitts for Cancer Bowling Series airs, please visit WONNewYork.net. Keith Beaupre leading off on lane 15, gets six. That's the one, three, eight, and nine. One piece of wood. We'll talk about some of the rules in Canopin, unlike 10 pin, where you can put those outside New England in Canada. Keep these up the head pin. It's a game for all ages, started in 1880, 15 years before 10 pin bowling. Three balls rolled per box, or frame in the column 10 pin, as Keith gets a 10 to start the match. So the big difference is when a pin falls in the playing surface, known as wood, bowlers are allowed to use the wood to make shots. Pick some very interesting shots and made a miss, right? Greg, it's crazy sometimes how those shots go. Absolutely, Paul. So every pin you could get on the third ball is essential, and Bill Beaupre getting that 10 could make a difference as we go down the stretch. Yeah, that's a nice shot for a strike in the second box of the first. This guy can really kill it. One of the fastest bowlers around. It's up to 46 mile per hour fastball. 20 plus 2 in the first of three. Candle pins for cancer. The bowling ball is made up 4.5 inches, up to 4.5 inches in diameter. Maximum weight of 2.7 pounds. The pins are shaped like candlesticks, tapered on both ends. 15.75 inches high and almost 3 inches in diameter. And at 2.8 pounds. Winchell, John Winchell, J-O-N, 9. King pin left up the 5 pin.
John Grinch of Red Hot of Late. Very steady bowler. Won five consecutive money matches with Brian Fuller Jr. $2,500 match, they split five times in a row. 2021 and 2022, and a spare. So each of the marks so far, 10 of the ball to start his match. John from Brentwood, New Hampshire. Three more days, he'll turn 49. On the bonus, head pin, left side, crossed over. In 10 pin, they call it the Brooklyn side. As the three pin left up, 19 after one in the first of three. Candlepins for cancer. Again, to donate, please help the charity. Candlepins number four, cancer.com. That's candlepins the four, cancer.com. For two in a row, use the wood, got it. 29 of the ball through two, strong start for both bowlers. Sometimes the wood helps, sometimes it hinders. Sometimes that piece of wood can be an obstacle in front. Luckily for John, it sat flat, and that's how he converts the second mark. Keith Bolcre working a strike on lane 16. Strikes are rare in this game. Only about 12% of head pin hits produce strikes. I call him the tsunami. As he throws that ball, he just explodes when he's in the pocket. And that's a torrential downpour, seven on the first ball. One, two, four. Let's get one in the back, actually. Super pin back in the eight, Greg. Yes, so he gets does. six down, actually. And grabs three. Nine fill in the strike. 38. 29 through two. Maybe 39 if he gets his 10 box through three. And he does. On the object pin. Perfect shot. 39 through three in the first of three. Good to work with you again, Greg. Pleasure to be here, Paul. You did the Pro Series last night. All pretty, pretty long day for you. The first of many events monthly in the Pro Series. That's uh, out of well, the first event was out of Academy Lanes in Haverhill, and of course many other houses. Nice ball for a strike. Will it go? Yes! The tsunami! Second strike in the string. If only they were consecutive, but still a great momentum starter in the first of three strings. 49 plus two through four, wow. John Winchell, spare nine in the spare on lane 16. A good but, score in, in, in Candlepin is about 150 is a great score in Candlepin. Pro average is about 120, 120. 125 in the high end. Some are a little bit higher. On the bonus, in the pocket, six has the half whistle left at two eight. To 710. Winchell certainly on the high end for a reason, consistently. 35 through 2. Right now, box to box is up 6. In the first of 3. Candlepins for Cancer from Ports of Ball Rama. Trying to kick it over. It looks good. Oh, what a try. Almost. Oh, you saw that wood helicopter in front of the 10. Did very well to grab the sticks. And that's one of the great things about, like you said earlier, the Candlepin Bowling, you can play that wood. Winchell, wide left for a nine. A perfect game in Candlepin, it's all 10 boxes, spares, and strikes. Highest game in Candlepin history is 245, done by two bowlers, Ralph Sem in 1984, and Chris Sargent in 2011. John 44 through three right now. He's up five. He's up against a strike from the tsunami. Keith Bopre in the pocket again. Has a triangle. Minus one. Minus two. It's just a two pin. Since double strikes are even rarer than the already rare strikes, getting spares often can be just as good. Obviously, you get a few extra pins on a strike, but getting a mark here could be important. Look for his third spare, and he got it. Single pins go about 72% for pro bowlers without wood in Candlepin Bowling. Stats provided by Candlepin Bowling Network. John Winchell, a strong start also. 54 through four, plus one. Now back up to Keith Beaupre. You see that compact delivery he has. That, first, that last shot he had was clocked in at 44 miles per hour. A young bowler has so much untapped potential still. On the strike. 
Eight, nine, will it go for another one? It does! Bang! Paul, oh, they are getting spoiled. Double strike, wow! I'll have to fix the score, but it's showing a nine because it took a while for that pin to go down. So a double strike for Keith Bovray. The Tsunami, three strikes. What's interesting is the pin set are new. Bart Madeira is the only here. TV bowler on the pass on channel five. Fixes the scoreboard. Bowl prey. Working with a triple strike. Going for a triple. Off to the right though. Get six, 26 net first strike box. Now it's 10 plus the ball. The one, two, four, and the five behind the head pin. That's called the king pin. One piece of wood in back. Not much of a factor. And he almost got it. That wood blocked it up. It does go on the delay again. Spare and double strike. Wow. What a start. The power is evident in the approach, and the power is evident on the result side. 95 and a ball through six, and he didn't feel like being here today. His leg was farther than last night. He's been a lot of bowling, and look at this. Didn't even warm up. <laughs> Called out. 95. That is amazing on Camelpin. We're spoiling them. John Winchell on a spare. 54 and a ball, both red hot. Two red hot bowls of late. He gets six, seven. At the one, the seven, and the nine. Two pieces of wooden between the one and the seven. 61 through four. He's down four box by box. It's a three string total pinfall. He missed the object pin that time, leaving up the 179 with no wood. Trying to grab a couple here, and it gets one for an eight. Hit the object pin, wouldn't carry. Strong half, 69. You throw a 69 and a half in candle pin, that's a great score. And you're down 16 already. And he's up against a spare. John doesn't get rattled though. He just locks in and resets. You have to have a knee in this game. And, he, and, he's used, and he's used to the pressure of TV. He's been on TV as far back as a uh, old show called Stars and Strikes on Channel 50. Crosses he's over used. the head pin for a strike. It's nine. Leaves up the nine pin. Both balls bring it here in the first, a three. By rule, that wood must completely stop before you throw the ball. Obviously, in 10 pin, they clear it away, but not in candle pin. It can be your best friend of your worst nightmare sometimes. What do you think about how it's angled, Paul? Uh, it's going to be tough. He's got to turn around top left. No guarantees. Can he pick it up? He does! Perfect shot! Spare! Did you see how he played it on the high side there? That's how it helicopters in and gets the nine behind. What a, what a shootout! To your point, four spares for John Winchell, three strikes and a spare for Beaupre. Again, I stress, folks, it's not every time we see half the boxes for a bowler be strikes. 95-79, Beaupre have 16. Both on spares. Here's Keith Beaupre in lane 16. 31 year old, it goes right this time and gets six. The one, two, the eight behind the two pin, the nine back right. Looks like two pieces of wood from my vantage point way back here. Oh, and I need, I keep taking my eye off the money. It's three marks in a row already for Bo Prey. Yep, he's, he's got, got $25 in bonus money, 500 for a triple strike. Which he darn near had. 101 to six. Oh, what a try, he got it! Incredible shot for spare! On fire here in the first in Portsmouth. When you have that power and angle, you can use the sidewalls effectively, keep the pins in there and bouncing around. Perfect. 111 of the ball on the spare fill. Head pin again for another strike. Almost. Nine more. 120 through seven. Insane. 120 is a pro average through 10 usually. Just about. That's why we get so amped up for even the spares. For another one, he's got it! Five in a row. Bring in that bonus money. 25 plus 25 plus 25. Look at him go. 130 and a ball through eight. Wow! Oh 
John Winchell on a spare, 79 the ball through six. He's both throwing a great ball also. <laughs> Al Johnson, the owner of Candle Pencer Cancer, is like, I don't know, do I still have to? No, just, I'm completely kidding, of course. Winchell on the spare, just missed the head pin. He gets the four spin left. That goes away now. It's the one, four, seven. He's got three pieces of wood. One between the one, four, and seven. One in between the four and seven. Seven on the fill. 86 through six. Which is very good in its own right. It's a three string total pinfall. It's only the first, plenty of time left. Can he pick it up? He does, what a beautiful shot. What a match. What a start. Five spares out of seven. He's and up to 96 in the ball, Greg through seven. And Paul, these are only the five and four seats having her step ladder. Corey Packard, Nate Lees, and Jimbo Ayotte soon to come in our future episodes. Winchell, head pin, two full that time. That's two on split. I haven't seen many splits this uh, string. It's the three six on the right, it's the four on the left. Seven on the fill, 103 through seven. Little dose of reality. These are the sorts of shots that separate the pros from the rest. Very challenging <laughs> for anyone. He kick it over. He got the object pin, but it wouldn't carry. That was interesting. It tripped on the piece of wood in the channel. That's why it didn't really get the sidewall bounce. Otherwise, maybe there was a chance. Single pins go about 72% for pro bowls and candle pin without wood. Stats provided by Candle Pin Bowling Network. John Winchell going for a 10. And right on it. Launch. 113 through 8. He's down 17 plus a ball from Keith Volpre. What a start. Pro Bowling in his finest here. Clinic by Bo Polis here in the first. And Beaupre's not done yet. Keith Beaupre, lane 15. Five marks in a row. Had a double strike earlier. On the bonus. Crosses over. Another strike. Are you kidding me? Wow. Are you serious? My goodness. He should oversleep more often. Got to have five minutes before the show started and didn't warm up. And look at him go. 150 plus two through nine. Amazing. Well, why are we suggesting we change his way? Seven marks and nine boxes. Amazing. Off to the right this time. Four in the first ball, make it five. The one, three, six in the right. A piece of wood between the three and the six. The four, seven to the left. Four strikes and three spares. Amazing. Ooh. Off to the right, it comes back. Head pin goes, just a seven left up. But a big nine, Phil. What an incredible string he's having, folks. Ten, what a string. 167 for Keith Crowfrey, the number five seed. 167. Simply sensational. No, it's 169. 169, eh? the scoreboard correction, 169 make it. Scoreboard's a little off there, and they, they corrected it. 169. But remember, folks, two strings still to come. Which well, is everything to play for still. A perfect game in Kenneth Bowling. All spares, tens, and strikes. So that was a perfect game. Winchell had a good string of his own, 113 through 8. He has a 3-1 split, the 4 to the left, the 3-6-10 to the right. Perfect game for Keith Beaupre. Try to kick it over. Object pin got two of the four. Has the four to the left, the ten to the right. Just trying to pin out here and get a mark on the tenth box and move on to the next string. Still 20 boxes, 20 frames, so to speak. Still to come. He gets a nine. 122 through nine. Already at his average of the box to go. He's going to be a tough luck loser here in the first, but luckily it's a three string total format. Indeed, Paul. Ten boxes in a string, ten frames in a game, it's all the same. Final box of the first string. Right in the pocket for a strike, it's nine. Eight pin left up, he's got a bunch of wood in front to help. Yep, looks all flat.
There's a watching a great first string, folks. This is Canelpin bowling. There's a right and wrong way to play, and he's got to get it on the right spot. Use this mark, and he's got it. Another spare. That's six in the string. One final ball to come in the tenth, of course. One thirty-two in a ball. As you might expect. There's a right or wrong way to play it. Had he hit the cap, it might have spun out. Six spares for John Winchell. On the bonus, he gets eight. And what a string. A 140, and he lost by 29. Can you imagine that? 140 is above average. The two bowlers high-fiving each other off camera. Well deserved. So after one string, 169 for Keith Lopre and John Winchell, 140. We'll be right back for the second string in just a moment. Welcome back to string number two. How about that sensational star? 169 for Keith Lopre and John Winchell, 140. Stats in that first string. Let's bring up Bob Lee, the update in stats. Bob Lee. That's right. Well, first uh, on accuracy, actually John Winchell with his 140 was the more accurate bowler. He was 22 out of 24 on his object, including uh, 9, of, 9 of 10 head pins on the, on the first 10 boxes. Keith Beaupre was 12 of 18 for 66% with his 169. Of course, four of those being strikes. Winchell had the six spares. He was throwing a 36 mile an hour ball. Well, Keith, who was throwing 43 to 44 miles an hour, uh, he had four, four strikes and, um, and three spares. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Bob Lee. And again, welcome to those on the WON Television Network. I'd like to thank our affiliates, WON Affiliates, Brooklyn Free Speech HD, MNN BronxNet, Superior Community Media, Marblehead Community Media, and Saugus Cable Television Station. For the broadcast station uh, schedule and station information on when and where Canelpin's Four Cancer Bowling Series airs, please visit WONNewYork.net. And a special shout out to Jonathan Rios at WON in New York for having us get across the country here potentially to support the great game of Cannibal Bowling. We're asking viewers across the country to donate to this great charity, Cannelpins for the Four, Cancer.com. Any amounts welcome, Cannelpins number four, Cancer.com. 140 in Cannelpin Bowling is a great string, and you lose by 29. A treat to watch. Second string of three from Portsmouth Bolorama, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Paul Grant, Greg Guillard with you live on Canelpin Bowling Network. Subscribe free on YouTube to Canelpin Bowling Network. John Winchell across the head pin, gets six. He has the three to the right, the five in the middle, to the left is the four and the seven. He's got two pieces of wood side by side. One inside, one outside. Nice try, good, good bid, great offer, wouldn't go. That's the four and seven. Possible if he played more to the right, it could have swept across from right to left, but hard to know for sure. Yeah. Canepin bowling is like golf. It can be very frustrating, very rewarding. It's a game of challenge and skill. Nice 10 to start the second. Down 29 coming in. Hitting, 29 is nothing in this game. Hitting those splits out. Pretends goes a long way towards closing that gap to your point. John's high single is 190. He's done it two times in his career. It's a high triple of 467 and a high five of 744. Head pin again, eight. Six and ten left up. Two pinners for Canelpin Pro Bowlers go about 51% without wood. Stats provided by Canelpin Bowling Network. Oh, Ooh. right in the object pin, wouldn't carry. Good try, again, on the object pin once again. Such a fickle thing. I mean, the object of two pinners is to hit the front pin because usually you miss a little bit off one way or another and you get it. Unfortunately, John found exactly the right slash wrong spot. And John is not perfect for the first time today, a nine. 19 through two and string number two of three. In the tsunami, Keith Beaupre. Keith is perfect. Put on a show for us in the first, 169, a double strike, four strikes, and three spares. 
And for those on WN Network, the average strike per string in Candle from Bowling is for pros is 0.9 per string. And he got four in that first. Goes to the right of the head pin, steals eight, has the one and the two, a generous leave. Same situation, can he solve this two pinner? And he got it. Eighth mark so far in 11 boxes. And we'll recap the bonus money here. Every mark beyond that third in that streak he had, he had a six mark streak, so $100 there and $25 for winning the first string. Plus, of course, the payouts for winning. Eight out of 11, is, that's amazing. Most of the payouts for placing in this tournament. Ooh. Too accurate, that's how, that's the frustrating about Caleb and Bowling. A perfect shot, a bullseye shot, and you get three. They call it the spread eagle plus the nine pin, the sleeper pin in the back, the nine. The left side is the two, four, seven. The right is the three, six, ten, with the nine behind the three pin. And it's nigh impossible, but uh, close to impossible to make. Good Except! Oh, almost! <laughs> almost pulled it up. <laughs> he shook his head that one. But see, that's what happens when you generate so much power behind yeah. the shot. Yeah. That's why bowlers use 2.7 pound bowling balls for the most part. The maximum allowed, uh, 2.7 pounds. By the way, that refers to two pounds, seven ounces. So it's not a true decimal per se. The pins, by that logic, weigh two and a half pounds, just slightly heavier than the ball. So Keith Bo Keith Bo for a spare 3-9, 22 through two, up three in the string. He's up 32 in the match. And that's why they deliver a fast straight ball rather than a hook to one. John Winchell gets three. In addition to the fact that there's no oil on the lanes. Or minimal, anyway. John's his wife, and two kids here today. <laughs> his grandmother got him involved, his family growing up. Well, since 1975, he's got the 4 7, one piece of wood in front, try to carry him that over to the right side, the 10. Brian Fuller Jr.'s teammate, winning five consecutive money matches at Extra Lanes, Extra New Hampshire, between last year and this year. He just put in $2,500, not bad money. Nine box, 28 through three. So after a furious start in the first, they're getting back to human beings here in the second. I warned you folks, Candlepin can be a frustrating game of ups and downs. It's so difficult to find the pocket and find just the right angle. If you like a good challenge, Candlepin Bowling's the game for you folks. Nothing like it. Thin hit in the head pin, got seven. The two, four, and the seven, like two pins. Three pinners go about 51% for pro bowlers without wood and Candlepin. Stats provided by Candlepin Bowling Network. And again, please subscribe free on YouTube to Candlepin Bowling Network. That's Candlepin Bowling Network. Subscribe, it's free. Watch countless hours of great Candlepin Bowling action. Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Nice bid, won't go. Oh, wow, well, a little bit of difference. There's the difference between a two and a three pinner, I suppose. Well, the object didn't carry. Nice pinning a 10, 38 through four. Second string of three from Portsmouth Bowlerama. Hey, folks outside New England, come out and visit Canopy Bowling Alley. We visit out here, support the local bowling centers. And for all you bowlers out here, around here in New England and Canada, support your local bowling centers by getting Candlepin gift cards this holiday season and all year round. Candlepin gift cards, a gift that keeps on giving. Definitely for everyone in the area, Candlepin, of course, based in Northeast North America between Massachusetts, uh, New Hampshire, and Maine predominantly. There's some presence elsewhere, including in Western New York as well. And of course, our Canadian neighbors in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Love to get the sport expanded out west. It'd be awesome. Keith Bowling, 169 first, 23 through two here in the second. Another strike, baby. Will it go? Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. The kingpin left up. That's the five pin. Too bad they generally have all day. The castle walls collapse around the king. He certainly did in the first. Pins a flat. This is a very fast house. One of the fastest houses around. And a fast house meaning more action. Of course. Picks it up for a spare. Four spares, four strikes. 
production, five spares, four strikes to match. Nine marks in 12 boxes. That's insane. Just because it's a fast house, you still have to be absolutely accurate. That's true. On the bonus, Mr. Head Pig got eight more. The one and two left up. 41 through three. Bolarama's fun for the whole family, but it doesn't mean the whole family can succeed. Got to be accurate. <laughs> Host your birthday parties here at Ports of Bolarama and all your local bowling centers. Great place for a great time. Another spare. Two in a row, third in the string. Oh, he's Six spares and four strikes. Keith Beaupre is certainly enjoying his time here today. 51 in a ball through four, 13 in the string, 42 in the match. What's the ball? And John Winchell, number four seed. Keith Bopre, number five seed. And again, John Winchell's 140 initially is superior as well. Corey Pack at the number three seed will play the winner in our next match later on today, right after this match on Kennel Ball Network. He's here and watching and on. Later on, you can watch it on WON New York and across the country at a different time. Four three-string matches today live on Kennel Ball Network. John Winchell has the one and the three spare leave. Two recent beneficiaries of a big ball away from the head pin. Powerful. <laughs> Winchell for spare. Got it. First mark of the string. 48 in the ball. Halfway through the second. Winchell. Six spears in the first, one here in the second. Winchell will definitely need to put some marks together, but of course, putting marks together in its own right gets bonus money, as does winning each string. I did a match in the Atlantic Kennel in single straight, like 100 and a 101 his first two. They threw a 150 something twice and a 149. What a match. 710 goal poles, a plethora of wood on the surface to play. Eight on the fill, 56 half. Yeah, John's studying that wood, isn't he? Is there any way he can trampoline a ball off the left piece, for example, or spin the right piece over? I'll let him decide. That's why we're back here. <laughs> I'm gonna go right, he might go left. He's going right, and it was, oh! oh a roadblock stopped it, that would've gone. It's pinwheeled across and tripped into another piece of wood. What a shot, dude. That would've gone, that wood blocked it out. Good, def good defense by the wood. Winchell needed so many, needs so many marks. He's still got time, we've still got plenty left. We're only at the halfway stage. John is not an easy out. <laughs> Barrels through for a 10. It broke, through the, broke, through, broke through the cinder blocks that time. It nearly threatened to take that away from him, too. 66 through 6. You're watching Candlepins for Cancer on Candlepin Bowl and Network and WON Network. Please help support the Candlepin charity. Candlepins with a four cancer.com. Anything for a dollar, up to $1,000 is appreciated. Every $1,000 helps a member of Candlepin Bowling community from chemo radiation treatments, Candlepins with a four, cancer.com, Candlepins four, cancer.com. Keith Beaupre head pin this time, a baby, well, mini split, a little more than a mini split, I would say now. He has the three to the right, the seven to the left. To your point, those checks, well, they're not a million dollars, but it sure makes them feel like a million dollars going through the, uh, at best, the cost of this terrible disease. Trying to kick it over on the object pin, but not much you could do there. Couldn't get the wood to carry. The Tsunami having an awesome day so far. Missed that time for a nine. Oh, that's the first pin Beaupre's left standing, in fact. 59 through four now, 68 through five, up 12 in the string, 41 in the match, up against a spare from John Winchell. I get the nickname the Tsunami because he just destroys those pins like Charlie Collins, the Terminator. Crosses over the, the left ahead pin for another strike, but go! It wiggles, it wobbles, but it won't go. In terms of relative speed, I would say Keith is one of the most compact and quick deliveries, and John Winchell is one of the more slower, deliberate, but nonetheless deadly accurate deliveries. That was nine and nine tenths down. And he got it for a spare, another one. 
Seven spares and four strikes in the match and 15 boxes. Wow, Six, 16 boxes. Incredible. 78 in the ball through six of 12 in the string, 41 in the match. And John threw a 140 in the first, lost by 29. That's how great this match has been. John switches over to lane 16 here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. On the bonus, just missed the head pin as the four has been left, the one, two, four, seven. 72 through six. Without Wood, four horsemen go about 36% of the time for Pro Bowlers without Wood. Stats provided by Candlepin Bowling Network. And he missed the right. Nice and Sticks now wants to be careful not to punch through on the head pin, for example. With this right to left break, it doesn't seem terribly likely he will. Not too many misses by either bowler tonight on their second shot or third shot. And nine out of that. I'm taking a look at Bob Lee's radar gun. John Winchell clocking in at 37 miles per hour. 75 through seven, the second of three. I'm first, lucky. First of four matches today. I'm lucky if I top 20 sometimes. I do better at Skittle Bowl from Aurora. A little game in the 70s, oh, 1969. Yeah. Winchell gets eight. Seen a few of these today. The one three left up. Trying to cash in here this opportunity. Again, about a 51% success rate for pro bowlers without wood, but two pinners for Canelpin Bowlers. Again, stats provided by Canelpin Bowling Network. We can subscribe free on YouTube to Canelpin Bowling Network. For a spare, he got it. He split the uprights. And we also have Facebook presence as well. Uh, also called Candlepin Bowling Network. Please like and follow us there as well. 85 and a ball three for John Winchell. For Grand New Hampshire. Keith Beaupre, 78 of all through six. Won the first 169 to 140 with four strikes and three spares. Got four spares here. Uh, another bit for a strike, nine. Four pin, a great piece of wood in front. I believe there's one in front of the, uh, in front of the uh, behind the wood also. For another one, he's got it. Five spares in a string. I'm trying to calculate the average, but it keeps moving. <laughs> 87 through six, 97 of the ball through seven. His, his average spare fill is north of seven. Usually it's about six and a half for most bowlers. 8.3 for a strike, 6.5 for spares for pros. Head pin again, a little thin, but gets six, a good piece of wood. The two, four, seven, and the nine to the right. The Tsunami on a mission today as the number five seed. We'll have to win four ladders series to get the $2,000 first place prize. Has to play this wood strategically. Another wood spare, good try. And I call this the Star Trek character, the seven of nine. The seven nine left up, the wood is coming back. It's a 10 foot line that's to be cleared. And Al Johnson will go down and clear that wood. Unless it was in the gutter. Nope, so they don't have to clear it now. Pick your favorite pin here. Sorry Alfie, no camera time for you. Gets one for a nine. 103 through seven, 111 in a ball through eight. And it pales in comparison to last string. Not that there's nothing wrong with 111 through eight. So what a great uh -oh. ball all day. Uh-oh. <laughs> About to clear that wood on lane 16. <laughs> Keith Beaupre. <laughs> doink, doink. He does it. Off he the goal post, off the goal post. <laughs> he can't miss anything. Yeah, he doesn't know how to hit the gutter. I know. He only lets it the head pin today. <laughs> you get a good laugh out of that one. What's John your Winch, your last two boxes, second string. Still a chance to... Needs a lot of marks, needs them now. It's good to laugh, it makes you more relaxed. John Winchell has the four and the five. Right. Wood's not much of a, well, it could be, uh, you got to go wide right in that wood, twirl it around. 
good fill, but yeah, yikes. Eight on the spear. Makes 93. He's looking. It seems to have angled just the slightest bit. It's very horizontal, nonetheless. A little bit front left to back right. Scott Douglas made the 7-9 with a high piece of far right wood. Can he do the same thing? Oh, what a try! That's it, what he was trying to do, trying to spin it over to the right. Scott Douglas made that in the Atlanta Kennel Open single string against his brother Tim Douglas for a 10 box to win the string by one pin. Watch on Kennel Open chat. That's a gentleman shot for a 10. Don't hurt him, John. The Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour, another great Candlepin League founded by Frank DeLuca and now run by Danny Finn. That is matches streaming as well, and they have a Facebook and YouTube presence of their own. And we got Atlantic 16 teams from Maine also. Yes, expanding rapidly. That's the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. John Winchell, 103 through 9, the second of three. How about the woman? We have a women's, women's TV show coming up too. Ladies, you want to sign up? Candlepins for Canson.com. Candlepins number four Canson.com. If you can't bowl, please donate to the charity, Candlepins number four Canson.com. A check mark for John Winchell. The, the five in the back left, three, six, ten to the right. I love a mark here. He bowled more than well enough to win that first string of the 140 and lost by 29. Hooked it left, the second time he's missed a second shot. Like that. So you need a big third string to advance as the fourth seed. Corey Packett yeah. on the on-deck circle for the next match. Some bona fide spare leaves just not working out for Winchell, unfortunately. John threw a 603 in the qualifying round. Keith Bofer a 596. Ooh, punched out one for a tough seven. And 110. Second string, 140 and 110, 250 through two for number four seed John Winchell. Keith Beaupre actually got a break because Brian Fuller Jr. threw a 619 in the qualifying round, but had Patriots tickets with his family he forgot about, so he couldn't make the show. So Keith Beaupre got the number five spot, and he took advantage with a 169 first. And he's at 113 through eight here in the second. Back of the head pin, no strike. No strikes this string, but some close calls. The kingpin, the five pin left up. But he has five spares in the string. And he nails it. Six spares, nine in this match, with four strikes. Folks, 13 marks and 20 boxes. That is astonishing. The only time Beaupre has, Beaupre has not made a single split, but every time he's left a leave, he's made it. Every single one. He is locked and loaded today. 123 and a ball through nine on lane 15. On the bonus, nice ball. And Greg, you spoke too soon. The announcer is jinxed. He had a split. He has the, a lot of birthday parties here. It's good to see the kids. Want to get on TV, storm the field. <laughs> no police to kick him out, though. It's that, good. The kids, that happened below The, the kids want to get their face time. Three six on the right, there's seven on the left. Try to kick it over, good try. Just missed to the right by his spec. He's up to 130 through nine. He's closing on three, close to 300 for two strings. And nine, and a one. 39. 39, second string, 169, 139. He is 308 for two strings. 150 average, unbelievable. That's Unbelievable. Right. And on that, on that said, Keith only missed five balls. He was 19 of 24, averaging 44 miles an hour. Um, J John Winchell dropped down. He, he, he missed eight times. He was 20 for 28 on that series for a 72% accuracy. Just the two marks. The difference. It's really power versus accuracy today. Um, overall, John, you know, Winchell, especially in that first match, at 22 for 24, really a remarkable 92%. One of the, you know, a very rare. Uh, uh, accuracy rate in the 90s, but uh, this is something else coming from Keith Beaupre. So after two strings, Keith Beaupre, the number five seed, has a 308, a 154 average, and John Winchell, averaging 125, is at 250. One he's more a, string to go. He's only left one pin standing yeah. the whole time. Just amazing ball on the both sides. John, a little bit down that string, but he's got to have a big third string to come back and win it. And we'll be back for a third string in just a moment on Pendleton Bowling Network and WON Network across the country. Thank you.
All right, here's the scoreboard. Welcome back, everybody. String number three. If you just tuned in, my goodness, Keith Beaupre with a 154 average and John Winchell with a 125 average. Here at Bolarama in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Hey! And straight to stop the third. Had four in the first, none in the second, but five in the match. Wow. 169 and 159, 10 plus two to stop the third. We, Unstoppable. We just narrowly began the third string. Keith Beaupre, that was his fifth strike. Has nine spares atop that, and only seven opens. First ball on the strike goes left. Mixing and matching, the kid steals eight. Has the one and three, wouldn't help. You're watching Candlepins for Cancer Bowling Series on Candlepin Bowling Network and the WON Television Network. Beaupre going for a spare on strike, and he got it. 20 through one, 30 in the ball through two. Wow! He didn't want to bowl today either. We'd like to thank our, some of our WON affiliates across our series, Brooklyn Free Speech HD, MNN BronxNet, Superior Community Media, Marblehead Community Media, and Saugus Cable Television Station for the broadcast schedule and station information on when and where to watch Kennelpins for Cancer Bowling Series please visit wonnewyork.net. On Canopin Bowling Network, please subscribe. On YouTube, it's free. Canopin Bowling Network. You're seeing a clinic, an absolute clinic, by Keith Beaupre, the tsunami today. John Winch will start off his third string. Got a big hole to climb out of. A 140 in the first, a setback in the second, 110. But it's been all Keith Beaupre. A 169 and a 159. And he told me last night at the Pro Series his leg was bothering me in a bowl. Well, Paul, Markey, Paul Markey was the alternate. He came down just in case. But Keith made it about five, ten minutes before the show started. Didn't even warm up. Well, we, we got them. Precedent accounted for. We should have Nate Lees, who helped run that Pro Series, of course. Nate Lees is the number two seed. He'll play the one of the next match. Jim, and Jimbo Ayotte, runner-up last night in the Pro Series. He's the number one seed through a 703 qualifier in the nine-pin tournament. That would have been 236. Through six straight nine blocks in that third string. Missed the first two for Spears. One with a piece of wood. They got four in a row. He was just a machine that day. Steady all day. And we'll see him as the number one seed later on today in a different time on WON Network. Four, first of four matches today from Bola Rama, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. All Grant, Greg Gouya with you along with Bob Lee. Candlepins for Cancer was formed by Al Johnson, who has the 10-pin record in Candlepin for 15-25 for 10 strings. The goal is to promote the Candlepin Bowling and promote the charity to help Candlepin Bowling families and their members with chemo radiation treatments, suffering from that disease, out of work, helps pay for expenses, $1,000 check to those families. So we need your help, your donations, anything from a dollar to $1,000 is appreciated. Candlepins with a 4 cancercom Candlepins with the 4 cancercom Just waiting for lane 15 to get reset. A lane delay. Indeed. And another note now, I've paused the recording, but the stream's still going. So while we're talking to you all, October, we have some roll-offs coming up right here at Bolarama. Somewhat short notice, we know, so please check your calendars. Tuesday, October 11th, 13th, 15th, and 16th. You can see uh, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. You'll see it on Candlepins for Cancer. Dot com Again, the number four, as you see it on your screen. And you can sign up for that. And the ladies roll off coming up. Go, ladies, go! And that and that will be a January roll off. Well, the roll off is going to be November 29th on Tuesday, 11 o'clock. December 1st, 11 o'clock. And Saturday and Sunday, December 3rd and 4th, 11 and 2. The live TV show at the Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine. January 14th, 11 a.m. on Candlepin Bowling Network and WON as well. What are my odds to make a comeback right now? John, your high score. Are we at like 15%? You're 190, John. You bowl, you bowl, well, you bowl well up to win that first string. You, you had some tough breaks in the second string. You're doing a great ball overall. Gotta, you're, running, hit, you're up against a tsunami here today. Yeah. I got to hit the head pin a little better to give myself a chance. We'll see. But, um, we'll wait for lane 15 to get fixed here. Sorry for the delay. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll keep it alive. Oh, it's good. And we're getting ready to start here now. Bart Medeiros, veteran bowler. Hall of Famer. On channel 5. As all said, John Winchell will start off his third string.
and you got to feel good for Keith Beaupre. He struggles. Sometimes he gets down, he gets frustrated. Today he's feeling it and just the potential of Keith Beaupre is just, he could be a top five bowler, number one bowler potentially, definitely a top five bowler. John Winchell, seven, has the three, six, and 10. The wood rolls into the gutter, some call it the channel nowadays. That is no good if it comes out of the gutter, knocks him down, won't count. For a spare, yes. Good way to start. Zippa gets a strike and a spare from Keith Beaupre. He'll need seven or eight marks just to have a chance. That might not be enough. Yeah, he would probably need something in the 170, 180. He would probably need a double strike of his own. That said, put some marks together, get some bonus money on your way out the door. On the bonus, this is called the Calera, the Bob Caleri bowler. Had a lot of these leaves. It's the fourth one, right? The one, three, six, ten, the eight in the back. He's got two pieces of wood, one by the eight and one between the three and the six. Calaries without wood for pro bowlers convert about 20%. Stats provided by Kendall from Bowling Network. And just missed inside the head pin as the one and the 10. 15 through one after that spare five. And we'll talk to both bowlers before we sign off the match. And we'll sign off after that and get back to our second match on Kenneth Mullen Network. Corey Packard, the number three seed, bowls the winner of this one. John 9, 24 through 2. He's down six in the string. Keith Beaupre just going berserk here today in Portsmouth. Absolutely. And again, a special shout out to everyone watching on WON Media. That second match will be later, so check your local syndicated network for times and schedules for Candlepins for Cancer so that you're always in the know on when our next Step Ladder editions will be. Next time you're in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, or Canadian Maritimes, please visit a, visit a local bowling center. It is a fun game to watch. You see a lot of people come and bowl, and they love it. It's a very challenging, very rewarding game. Five on the field for bow prey. I guess you could say it's a paltry 35 through two for him today. Actually, it's his highest through two. <laughs> Oh, what a shot, almost. Beautiful shot off the wall. Looks like a rock solid eight pin, but great dynamic pin action again. No bonus money this time. He had five in a row on the first string. Six? Six in a row, actually, right. And I'll give him $100, no, $7,500 $7, in bonus money. 100. 25 for three in a row, then 25 for successive marks. A 10 here, 45 through three in the third and final string of this first of four matches today. From Lawrence, Massachusetts, originally Lynn Mass, for another strike! The nine pin wiggles again, won't go. Get over, you were hit. <laughs> oh, and look at this wood that's going to roll in front here. Is it going to stop there? Yeah, looks like it. By rule, that wood must completely stop in candle pin before you throw the ball. Oh boy, that is a threat to deflect the ball away. The wood, the uh, pe the nine pin doing the Elvis Presley. I'm all shook up, but it won't go. <laughs> Gonna go high in that wood. Can you pick it up? No. See, that's how the wood. So so difficult. Helps shouldn't hurt you sometimes. Uh, Winchell figured out a way around it uh, for this particular match. He was went low on it, I believe, and yes. just drove it straight through. Had to go high high left in that wood. Good try though. And miss for a change for a nine. Right out of the box here. Let's go. Keith is human. 54 through four here in the third. And John needs to pretty much mark out to have a chance. Averaging 125 his first two, a 141st with six bears. Two in the second. Nice ball, nine. The train right by the five pin. John is always a frequently high finisher in the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. He's not balling this year in that tournament or tour. For a spare, missed it. Again, those go about 72% for Pro Balls that would. Stats provided by Candlepin Bowling Network. Just shook his head in that one. He's got about the same number of spares as Beaupre, but Keith, of course, five strikes, making a huge difference in the match. 
and Paul Grant special missed the second, make the third. 34 through three in string number three. Keith Beaupre also was only left four pins standing in his nine open boxes. Winchell had a very good rate as well, 11 pins standing in 14 open boxes. Fourth box, third string, John Winchell in a big hole. Nice pocket shot, half Worcester, 2-8 it's called. Seven pins to the left. This would be amazing. Nice try. Ooh. It's very difficult to pick up the half Worcester. I always do it better on the first shot. Good effort, though. And it looked like the pins dribbled left slightly as well. Half Worcester, of course, the 2 8 or 3 9 punch out. Harkens back to a time when there was a match between Boston and Worcester, and one of the Boston bowlers drilled through the 2 8 or 3 9 pocket, as it were, and one of the guys said, All right. No, it was one of the Worcester guys. Excuse me, of course, because the guy from Boston said, ah, Yeah, halfway back to Worcester. It kind of stuck. Winchell at 10, 44 through 4, down 10 in the string, down a boatload in the match. Keith Beaupre looking to punch his ticket as number 5 seed, getting that second round. $2,000 first place prize, $1,000 for second, $500 for third. Onward down. Head for dead again, here's the 9 10. One playable piece of wood, realistically, between yeah. the 9 and 10. Oh, not, that, not a bad leave. Yeah, that got a lot better because the piece of wood tapped the 10 and angled in. Not a gimme, but easier. For a spare, got it! On the cap! Second spare of the string. 11th in the match. In one strike. Five strikes, of four in the first, including a double, and that 169, 140 win in the first. 159 in the second, 308 through two. First ball, nine! Couldn't get to go left that time. Good fill. 73 half. And he's easily going to surpass a 400 triple. Oh, he got it to go, another spare. 83 and a ball through six, wow. And John Winchell, balling decent. Just got to chip your cap when someone does that against you. Jimbo A out, the number one seed today. We'll see our last match today on Kenneth Ball Network. And later on on WON Network, through a 703 qualifier. And that is a very rare feat, 700 in Kenneth Bowling. That was for five string qualifying round. One more thing about bonus money 400 gets an extra $100 bonus. He close has to have that either easily. If you can somehow get to 500, it'd be another hundred dollars. Unless he suddenly learns how to throw it in the gutter. Well, he doesn't know how to throw a ball in the gutter. Hit the, remember, he hit the bumper guard there trying to clear the wood. Uh huh. <laughs> John, go check that wood. I believe it's in play, but Al John's going to check it. John, the force from left, the one, two, four, seven. Greg, your thoughts on the match so far today? What's there to say other than just? Wow! <laughs> 17 marks to 9 for Keith Bopre. I wish royalty fees every time someone said, wow. I don't know if you can copyright an interjection. <laughs> we sell wow t-shirts to help support candles for cancer. They're $25 high quality Gildan brand thick cotton shirts. $10 at each shirt is close to the charity, candles for cancer. Winchell, oh, good shot. Somehow it didn't go. Great try. Uh, a 36% success rate for Pro Bowls that would doesn't go as the four and seven. There may, some may ask why wouldn't you play the wood over there, but the wood isn't as reliable, especially for a skilled bowler like Winchell. Going at the pocket tends to be the safer bet, unless the wood is like right there. He went to a PBA tour recently too as well, sporting the wild shirt. And now he's in a Candleman house sporting the PBA shirt. 54 half of John Winchell. It's been all Keith Bopre, the tsunami, all day today. John breaks up the four horsemen as the one, two, and the four. Again, three pinners that would go about 51% for Pro Bowlers. 
Stats provided by Cantlepin Bowling Network. Corey Packard in our next match shortly after this broadcast. We'll sign up for a few while the bowlers, bowlers warm up. We'll come back live on Cantlepin Bowling Network. Off the wall, spare, nice shot. 59 the ball through six. Second spare of the string, 10th in the match. And Keith Beaupre, a very memorable performance so far today. 169, 159, 308 through two. He's on a spare on lane 16, 83 in a ball. Looking for three marks in a row, more bonus money. And it won't be easy this time. He's got yes. wood to help. He has the one, four, seven, nine, two pieces of wood between the one and the nine. One off to the right, actually. 89 through six in the third. Oh, what a try, almost! What a bid! So close. And a pin kicked back, but not with enough speed to take it out. He is feeling it today. And 10, 99 through seven. Feel it. Oh, wait, that's the song from the Pacer Test. Those nightmare suicide runs they did in gym. It's gonna be great for his confidence too. Any bullet does that. It's gonna be great for your confidence. But it could be a funny game. It could be cruel. We see people get 184s and then get like an 88 the next string, you know. And one, he got a 194 in Riverwalk Lane's name's for a mass. And a strike for the tsunami. What? My goodness. Six strikes in the match. Wow. 109 plus two through eight. <laughs> and the gutter ball is perfect as well. Just a little scoreboard adjustment. Well, hopefully Beaupre has more of that in him because he's climbing the ladder. Still three matches to go. Next stop, Corey Packard, all but mathematically. 12 spares, six strikes, including a double strike for Keith Beaupre. Looking really good here to advance. John Winchell on a spare on lane 16, 64 in a ball. All but certainly at the stage. Nice ball. Breaks the split as the 4 7 spare leave. 72 through 6 here in the third. John's won multiple state titles, tournaments. Part of the 2018 ICC. International Kilman Championship, high average, at Academy Lane's April Mass. And that's fair. He's got two in a row. 82 in a ball through seven. He's averaging 120, a very good pro score. Unfortunately, his opponent is overperforming. Average 125, the first two. And a 140 in the first, lost by 29. Made the clinching shot in the U.S. Invitation last year at Lita Lanes, National Hampshire. In the playoffs, he has the post. Five on the fill. 87 through seven. Won a 2017 single scratch title. He's got so many to list here. 2016 single scratch title also. And many more. Nice bid, almost. What a try. And with that, it is mathematical. Keith Beaupre officially advances and will face the number three seed, Corey Packard, in the next match. Well, if you next on Kenneth World Network, a few minutes after this broadcast, we'll sign up for a few, come back, and watch it later on on WON in New York and across the country. One show. A nine. 96 through eight. And again, one more time, we're doing this for a good cause. Candle pins for cancer. Number four cancer, as you see it on your screen. Candlepinsforcancer.com. Supporting bowlers and their families against the fight, the financial costs of this terrible disease. Thank you so much for your support just by watching. And if you have a bit to spare, please log on to the site. And we appreciate anything you're able to provide. Encourage the bowlers to sign for the Rollos Men and Ladies tournaments coming up here soon. Bull pray, the tsunami. A strike. Another strike. First ball in the strike, nine. Can't do anything wrong today. The only thing wrong is he overslept and it's paid off. The three pin for a spare on strike. And he's got it. 
The worst part is he's going to have to start over the next game. <laughs> 119 through 8, 129 in the ball through 9. His high single 194 is a 193 also. High triple 461, high 5 714, high 10 12 68. On the bonus, thin hit. Looks like 5. Has the 2 8 half whistle, the 5 in the middle, the 7 10 goal poles, two pieces of wood. 1. 34 through 9. 139 is his minimum string in this. Oh, wow, what a shot for Spare the 10th. Incredible. 144 on a ball. Look at the three consecutive 150 plus strings. The tsunami. That shot was wired. <laughs> he belongs since 1996 out of Riverwalk Lane's Ainsbury Mass. Oops. Thin hit. Can he get to 150? Not quite. Five at a 149. He got worse the last all three things. 169, 159, and 149. Actually, what a performance. 139 in the middle. Oh, I'm sorry, 130. We'll take a look here. 139, rather, not 159. 139 in the middle. I kept saying 159. 139. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes, his score sheet is marred by that 139. Yes. Not bad. Three sting trouble, Greg, for him. John, pinch up the string here. Four, seven, six, ten on the right. I did that thing on Press Your Luck where they flashed the board too soon. This will be something. Open. Oh! Almost pulled it off. Yeah, that wasn't pin left off. That seven pin falls a different direction. It could be a completely different story. 457 for Keith Bofrey. 457. That is amazing. It's a 149 average in Kendallton. That is insane. John to nine. One box to go in the match. We'll talk to Keith Bofrey afterwards for sure. 105 through nine. Yeah. 169, 139, and 149. They'll take on Corey Packer next on Kenneth and Bowling Network and later on on WON in New York. Oh, that was interesting pin action. The five and six toppled forward. Three and ten remain. John Winchell spare in the tenth. That's tricky. The cap can easily deflect the ball the wrong way. Good shot. Two strings over 120. Likely. 115, the ball to go. Strong first string with six spares since then. 110. And now six in the fill. 121. Phew, third I, string. Phew, I didn't jinx it. Congratulations to Keith Beaupre, winner 457 to 371. There's a look at your scores real quick, and we'll turn it over to Paul for the post game interview. Welcome everyone to the Bowl Robinson. I'd like to direct your attention over to League 9, 10, and 11 as Riley is celebrating their first, their fourth birthday today. John Winchell. Hey, Riley, what's up, buddy? How you doing? You both warm up to win on a regular day, but you ran into the tsunami today. There was, there was no stopping Keith. He was hitting the pocket consistently. I wasn't. I, that was probably the biggest difference. I made some nice spares, but. When you're dropping strikes all over the place, it's hard to keep up. 140 in the first thing, you lose by 29. That's going to be demoralizing in some ways. It is, but it isn't, because at least they kept it somewhat close. 29 pins over two more games really isn't that much. So he was optimistic going into the second game, but he just you know, extended the lead. I couldn't get some breaks here and there. I can't do anything on defense. That's the That's nature true. of the sport. Yeah. So. Class act, great performance, great effort. Cool. We'll Thanks, see Paul. you. You'll skip around. You'll be the third qualifying round next. Hopefully. I, I gotta make it first. Yep. <laughs> All right, John. That's no Thanks. gimme. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks, great attitude. Thank you. Let's bring on the tsunami, Keith Bofre, if he's still here. I think he's outside. Good Keith Bofre. Before we sign off, here he comes. We're having a munchie here for the next match. We'll give him a second to swallow it down. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Keith. 
it's okay to munch, chew, uh, uh, munch, munch it out here. Um, wow, what a, you woke, woke up late today, didn't practice, yeah. you bought a ton of bowling lately, you've been a machine of late. That's why I call it a tsunami. And 457 for three? Yeah, Are you serious? I, yeah, that's my second high triple. I was going for my high with 461, but uh, obviously I'll take the 457. I mean, I'm stoked that I threw it. It felt too easy in a way, but I mean, I'm not trying to be cocky or calm. I'm just glad that I'm doing what I'm doing now. Yeah, and you really kept your head in the game. You didn't get distracted. You didn't, you know, lose your mind. You were really proud of your, the effort you made to the performance you made. You kept, even when you missed shots, were very rare today. Yeah. A 169. Yeah. A 139 and a 149. A 149 average. That's insanity. Yeah, it's, it's, I I don't know how I did it, Paul. I really don't. I just, again, focus and stay straight. Like you said, keep my head straight. Now, how do you how do you reset now? Corey Pack in the tough out. He's up next now. How do you reset now and get, stay locked and loaded? Uh, again, just go up there and do what I was doing. Working for the first match. Hopefully, I can continue doing it the second match. That's all I can really say. Now, just a clinic performance today. Keith Beaufort, number thank five you. seed, takes number three seed, Corey Beckett. Back to Greg Gouya. Thank you very much, Paul. One more time, we'll take a look at the scoreboard. You see it here. Absolute dominance by Keith Beaufort, 457. We'll see him next against Corey Packard. John Winchell, 371. Thank you very much for watching across on Candlepin Bowling Network and across the entire WON Media Network. For Paul Grant, my name is Greg Gouya, and we will see you next time.